Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Yesterday I said happy Thursday and it was Wednesday. Uh, but today is Thursday and we are here for another fun science and school type of activity, educational stuff that's fun and activities that we can do at home using what we have. Um, today I want to talk about some really fun things that have to do with air. Now a lot of us don't really think of air as being made of stuff or material, but it is and it plays an important role in um, a lot of the things that we do in the world. For one thing, you can know that air does something when you fill up a balloon. So this is an empty balloon. And what did I just do? I added air to it and that's pushing, the air is inside pushing on the balloon from the inside and making it get bigger. And when I let go of it, all the air came out. We know air is made of stuff, okay? And so when you're walking through, just walking along, air is bumping into you. You just don't feel it because your body is used to it. And so we're gonna do a couple different things that have to do with air today. The first thing I wanna do to show some things has to do with air resistance. When you move through the air, air actually um, pushes against you or, or fights your movement. It's kind of like having to walk through a whole crowd of people going the other way. If you imagine you're walking one direction and a crowd of people is walking the other way, you kind of bump into them as you walk through them. And so imagine the crowd of people as air molecules, and then we'll talk more about that. The first thing I wanna do though is show you a book. This is, a, um, this is just a bound um, book that I have that is not a real expensive book because we're gonna be dropping it a couple of times. And I don't like to drop books, so um, I don't know about you moms who are watching, but I don't like to drop books. So I have one that can handle some of this dropping because we're gonna land on the concrete. And so I first wanna do a drop with a book and a sheet of paper. So I've got a sheet of paper and a book, and think about before we drop them, which one might land first. So let's do that, let's do that experiment first. Here we go, we're gonna drop them at the same time, I'm gonna let them go, one, two, three, Okay, the sheet of paper took longer to land than the book. But now let's try something else. Think about to yourself, why? Why did the sheet of paper land after the book? Why did the book fall faster? Well, let's try, is, is it because the paper is lighter? Let's try something else. I've got, let me get a yellow one so you can see it may be better. This is a yellow paper clip and here's a book. Paper clip's a lot lighter than the book. So do you think that the book will land on the ground before the paper clip? This is definitely heavier Let's see what happens, ready? Uh, one, two, three. Did you see that? They landed about the same time. Why do you think that is? The paper clip is much lighter than the book. Well, let's try something. I'm gonna take the same sheet of paper, okay, and I'm going to put it on top of the book, and I'm going to drop them together, and let's see what happens. Okay, do you see how the sheet of paper on top of the book fell right along with the book? Okay, we're gonna do one more drop and then we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna take the same sheet of paper, I'm gonna crumple it into a ball. Really tight. Incidentally, this is from one of Apologia's uh, science textbooks, our general science edition where we talk a lot about this process called air resistance. Okay, so here's my wadded sheet of paper and my book. Which do you think will fall first or land first? Here we go, ready? One, two, three. Did you see that they landed the same time? How come the sheet of paper crumpled up, fell at the same speed as the book, while the sheet of paper open fell slower? And why did the sheet of paper open fall at the same speed of the book while the sheet of paper was on top of the book. It all has to do with something called air resistance. So what happens is, remember I used the analogy of walking through a crowd of people and they're walking against you and you have to bump around them? Well, that's what happens with air molecules. Remember, air is made of stuff. It's, it's molecules, molecules of oxygen and nitrogen and carbon dioxide and other, other gases that are floating around us. And so, when something moves through air, it has to pass by all of those molecules. Now a sheet of paper like this, opened like this, has to cover a lot of space of air as it goes through. So it's kind of like a very polite obstacle going, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, as it goes all the way through. It has to bump around them, and that's why it kind of floats in a ziggy zaggy mo motion, because it's moving around the air molecules. Now, you can imagine this book it's kind of like a football player, linebacker guy, 
who's moving through that crowd of people and he just plows his way on through. He's like, out of my way. And he goes right through them, okay? So even though it's just as big as a sheet of paper and covers the same surface area, it has, it's just, it's so massive that it moves its way through and pushes those molecules away. Now the sheet of paper open goes more slowly than the sheet of paper balled up, not because of how much they weigh, but because this has less air resistance. This wadded sheet doesn't take up as much space as it's moving through the air, so there's fewer air molecules it bumps into. So it moves more quickly, just like the paper clip did, at the same speed, okay? So we're minimizing air resistance by, by smooshing it together like this, okay? And so um, we can actually use that to understand how things fly in the air. I showed a teaser picture, if you saw my teaser picture that I posted, about what a bird's tiny little feather at the top of its wing has to do with all this. Well, when birds fly, uh, scientists love to study birds flying because men wanted to learn how to fly. And so they studied the process of how birds flew and, and all the different properties. And there's a lot involved, including the shape of their wing, the, the weight of their feathers and the structure of their feathers, actually the, the, the makeup of their bones as well. But one of the things they identified was that when a bird lands, it's actually experiencing a lot of air turbulence in the same way that when an airplane lands, the same thing, it experiences lots of turbulence. And that's just bumpy air, lots of air molecules moving around it. And so scientists could not figure out why when, when they had their airplanes moving through the air, they were hitting all kinds of turbulence, so much so that it would weaken the wings. And in the early cases, it knocked the wings off the plane. But they went back and studied the birds again, and they noticed this. Do you see this tiny little feather right here on both wings, the little tiny one sticking out? That's called the allula, okay, the allula. And the allula is a tiny little feather that when it's up, it actually minimizes that turbulence. Now, it, didn't, it took years before scientists actually understood why it did. They just knew that every time a bird landed, the allula was up, and when the bird was flying normally, it was down. And so what did they do? They, 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 before they even understood why, they added a little space called a wing slot to their wings or flaps to their wings. And when they did that and used them while they were landing, it minimized the turbulence and it was a much smoother landing. And then later, after they used this design in the planes, they understood mathematically what was going on. So it even, it took a supercomputer and all kinds of mathematical problems to figure out the why behind it before they knew that it just did. And so they used it in their design. And so for years, man has looked at different ways that we can fly. And I'm hoping, we live in the pathway of um, an airport. And so I'm hoping that as we're talking, we might get to see an airplane flying over the top of us, but so far we haven't. But we can talk about some things and how to make planes. And one of the things I wanted to do is make um, something that we can learn from uh, the design in nature as well. This is uh, an interesting little structure and I'm gonna drop it and you can see what it does. You see it spinning around? What does that remind you of? Let me do it again. Let me hold it up higher. What does that remind you of? Helicopter? Yes, okay. How did scientists first see this and understand what this was? They looked at seeds. There's a certain kind of seed called a Samara that um, is a winged seed and when it falls out of a tree it spins around and trees want their seeds to disperse far and wide to help make sure that more trees grow far from them not right where they are and so they some of them create a seed with a wing which is called a samara and we're going to make this and i'll show you really quickly how to do that let me grab my we're doing my outdoor table here and i have there we go a sheet of paper. So if you do this at home, you want your, your sheet to be about seven and a half inches by two and a half inches, seven and a half by two and a half inches and cut out a sheet. And you can use regular paper. It doesn't have to be exact either, but that's the shape that I'm using, the size. Okay, and then, so I've got my sheet like this. I'm gonna cut just two little indentions from half the halfway point in a little bit and down, in a little bit and down. Maybe about a half an inch on each side. Maybe three quarters of an inch. There's one, little notch. 
I'm trying to use materials that I'm pretty sure everybody has at home so you guys can try this. So I have this funny look looking shape and now I'm going to cut straight down the middle up to that center point. Okay, so it kind of looks like a Y almost. Then you take these top flaps and you fold one towards you and one away from you. And lift them back up again. You see that? One towards you, one away from you, and they're lifted, I lift them back up again. And then just to add a little bit of weight to it, I'm gonna put a paper clip right at the base. This is a fun craft you guys can do at home. You can have some, some uh, have some contests of which, what size, what kind of paper makes it fly the best or spin the best. So here we go, ready? One, two, three, and there it goes. Nice little helicopter spin. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is something called lift. Um, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of discussion about that because it actually can get kind of, uh, kind of technical. But um, the reason why something as massive as an airplane thousands and thousands of pounds can fly in the air, can actually get get up in the air is because of a, um, a phenomenon called lift. And an airplane wing is kind of shaped like this. It's kind of a teardroppy kind of shape and it moves this way through the air. And so what happens is the air molecules that go up and over the top have to go a farther distance than the ones that go below it. And because of that, because it takes, they go faster as they're going through the ones below, it creates this phenomenon called lift that causes the plane to go up. Now that's, there's more to it than that, but that's kind of the, the general um, idea about what's happening with lift. And so not only does that cause it to fly, it helps it to glide as well too. And so um, the other thing I would suggest you try to do today is make some paper airplanes and see if you can come up with a good paper airplane design that will glide or float on the air molecules longer than another one. Um, is it the, the length of the wings or the pointiness of the front, the fuselage? And so that you can look up online and find all kinds of paper airplane um, patterns. The basic one that I'm familiar with is you take a, a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, fold it in half lengthwise, open it back up, make a little house shape by folding in these two corners. And then you can do a couple different things. What I like to do is fold the corners in one more time to the center like this. See what I did? I made a little house shape and then I continue, I took the folded edge and pulled it in towards the center. I'm doing the same with this side now. And then fold the whole thing in half again. So you have this almost triangular shape. And then you can fold down each side and get wings, okay? And whether you fold it straight or at an angle is gonna depend on how it's gonna fly. So I'm gonna fold mine kind of in line with the body of the plane. You see what I'm doing? All right, and then we're gonna test our plane flight and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here's my plane. Ready? Here we go. Pretty good. Have an airplane flying contest outside today if you can. If it's good weather outside, if not, do it tomorrow. Or you can even do it indoors with mom and dad's um, permission. But just try different designs. Look up online ways to paper fold and see if you can come up with a really good design. And then talk about why you think they fly farther or not as far when you throw them. Um, practice your technique of throwing because technique has something to do with it too. Well, and also here's a great uh, history link. Look up um, the brothers Orville and Wilbur Wright. Those are the two guys who historically are known for their airplane design and historically are known for the first ones to actually sustain flight in an airplane that they built. They were bicycle guys and they studied and studied and studied and they came up with a design that they tried several different tries before they got one to actually get up off of the ground. And so you can do a little history study to go along with flight and the history of flight. Look at the history of airplane design and see some of the mistakes that were made and some of the successes that were made. 
a lot of different trial and errors, and always going back to the drawing board, which is looking at what creation did and how organisms fly already and seeing what their secrets are and using those to give us ideas on how we can be up in the air like them. Well, thanks for joining me. We are coming back again tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern time. I hope you're having a great time. Leave any comments or suggestions or questions in this post and I'll, I'll check back and answer them all. And again, thanks for joining me today.